President Muhammadu Buhari calls on electorates to come out en masse to vote in the forthcoming elections as APC State takes its campaign train to Taraba and Adamawa states. Election observation adding value to the integrity of the electoral process. Observers in the forthcoming elections urged to make observations that will help deepen democracy in Nigeria. Lagos Federal High Court orders the arrest of former Director General of National Intelligence Agency, Ayodele Oke. Plus, ASU suspends three months industrial action. Hello, good evening and welcome to NTN Network News. I am Joseph Johnson in Abuja. Also reading with me tonight is Ruth Ario Samuel from our Lagos Network Center. President Muhammad Bari says the only way to guarantee his re-election in the February 16 polls is citizens to come out en masse to vote for the APC and stay to protect their votes until results are announced. The president re-emphasized this during the APC presidential campaign in Taraba State. Political correspondent Absalu Abdullahi monitored the rally. <laughs> Overwhelming best describes the reception of the APC presidential campaign team by the people of Taraba State. And party faithful say this is a clear demonstration of the people's desire for a new leadership under the platform of All Progressives Congress in the state. Party stalwarts extol the focused leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari within his first tenure, making reference to the revival of critical infrastructure like the Mambila Hydropower Station, which has boosted economic activities within the state. The, the president has directed us to do railway up to Jalingu and do the railway from Potakot to Meduguri to Damatru to Pronu. Everywhere we have gone to, even traditional rulers on their own acknowledge what has been done and they are requesting for more. President Muhammadu Buhari says his re-election bid is necessary to build on the solid foundation his administration has laid for all-round development of the country. There is nothing I want to say that the previous speakers have not said, but the most important is the construction of the dam here in Taraba State, the Mambila Hydroelectric Dam, and the ongoing road construction. Then the issue of power is also important to enable small businesses thrive. Taraba was not different as the APC received defectors from the opposition PDP including some serving members of the Taraba State Executive. It was the same scenario in Yola, the Adamawa State Capital, where people came out en masse to receive the APC presidential campaign team as it continued to woo voters in the Northeast. Party faithful applauded the peace being enjoyed across the state in the zone, alongside ongoing infrastructural development indicative of the commitment and selfless leadership of Buhari administration. We want a powerful president this time. We want a president with a clear majority to take majority in the Senate. President Muhammad Buhari said government policies are directly impacting on the people in line with the promise made in 2015 and that his desire for re-election is to enable him do more if given the mandate. But in we will continue to build roads, rail lines and make portable water available, affordable health care if we are re-elected. We will also continue to build on the successes. Those who defected to APC were formally received and party flags presented to the candidates. Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News.
President Muhammad Buhari has expressed sadness over the loss of lives at the APC presidential campaign rally in Jalingo, Tarabat State, this Thursday. In a statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, President Buhari says, I quote, I always feel very sad and distressed when ordinary Nigerians who love me and our party because of what we stand for and have done make personal sacrifices by taking the pains to show their support and their lives tragically, end of quote. While commiserating with the families of the victims and the APC family, President Buhari calls for restraint on the part of his supporters to avoid such tragic inf incidences and improve crowd management at Radley Grounds. The federal government says it would cooperate with uh, election observers and would not let the international community down in the conduct of the coming elections. A statement by the senior special assistant on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, says the presidency assures Nigerians and the international community that the president would do everything within his powers to ensure free, fair and credible elections in the country. Reacting to the clarification of the statement by the Governor of Kaduna State, Nasir El Rufai, concerning opposition call for foreign interference in the country's domestic affairs, the presidency noted that there is nothing more to worry about, as the governor spoke strongly in defense of the national interest of the country, and nothing more should be implied by any group. In the meantime, Minister of Foreign Affairs Geoffrey Yema has asked the people of Enugu State to ignore all negative propaganda against President Mohamed Buhari and vote for him in February at the continuation of the local government campaign mobilization tour for the president and APC in Enugu state. The minister assured them that the president means well for Nigeria and is loved and respected around the world. Foreign Desk correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. ABC! Day 4 of the local government campaign mobilization tour for President Muhammad Buhari saw the Kusike political movement visiting Isuzo, Inugu East, Inugu North, Augu, and Nkanu West local government areas of Enugu State. Say bye -bye. At each stop, the team was received by a keen crowd waiting to hear the achievements of the Buhari administration and the projections when re elected. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama, apart from reeling out the achievements of the Buhari administration in security, economy, anti-corruption, agriculture and other areas, said this will be consolidated upon if President Muhammadu Buhari is re-elected. We owe it to our children, our grandchildren and children yet unborn that we do the right thing on February 16th Vote for President Mohamedou Buhari. Other members of the team took turns to caution the people against what they call toxic propaganda against President Mohamedou Buhari and the APC, insisting that the party means well for Nigeria. At each of the local governments, the minister paid homage to traditional rulers to seek their support for President Mohamedou Buhari and the APC. The campaign continues with more local governments in Enugu. Makut Simon Macham, NT News. Former Liberian president and head of the ECOWAS Observer Mission, Helen Johnson Salif, has concluded her two day visit to Nigeria ahead of the general elections, holding meetings with the national chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomale, PDP presidential candidate Atiko Bubakar, and other key players in the electoral process. Dennis Adegunloye has more. The former Liberian president who is heading the ECOWAS election observer mission held talks with the national chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole. The APC national chairman thanked the former Liberian president for taking the time to contribute her quota in deepening the core values of democracy, which include free, fair and credible elections. Whatever you observe, if there's anything you think we can do differently as a political party, as Nigerians, to ensure that um, we have, uh, we continue to be an example to other countries. Uh, you have partners in us as APC. I've been asked by ECOWAS to head that mission. I'm honored to be able to do that and to serve Nigeria 
in any way. After an exchange of pleasantries, she also held talks with PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar. And the PDP national chairman, Uche Sekundus. The election must be free, must be fair, must be credible. Interactions continued thereafter behind closed doors. In Abuja, Dennis at Dignoy, NT News. Still talking politics, preparations have been concluded ahead of the general elections as INEC, the security, election observers and political parties meet to seal all aspects of the process. Mio Gidi was at the stakeholders meeting held in Abuja. Political activities are heightened. Parties are busy selling their manifestos to the electorate while those in charge of election administration are also not resting on their oars as they continue to fine-tune their last-minute preparations. To ensure an all-inclusive process, all key actors are gathered here to interact. First was the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who told the gathering that movement of electoral materials and personnel will start by 5.30 a.m. on Saturday morning to the various polling units and all the means of transportation will be deployed in order to ensure that the materials arrive at the polling units latest before 7.30. On election observation, 143 observers have been accredited, 119 local observers and 28 international observers. They are observers. They are not monitors of our election. International observers in the EU in particular wish to stress our impartiality. We are here to support no particular candidate, but to support a democratic process. On the collection of permanent voters card that ends on Friday. We also learned that much of the complaint is coming from those who have damaged or de defaced PVCs, the required placement, as well as those who applied for transfer and relocation, but the cards have not been found. Some of you may ask, but the last date for the collection of PVCs is tomorrow, which is Friday the 8th of November. The commission is going to meet today, and where it is necessary, will review the arrangement for the collection of PVCs. On the area of security, the acting inspector general of police made it point blank that flashpoints have been identified, pulling units checked, and three security personnel to man each pulling unit. No security personnel at any pulling unit is allowed to carry firearms, food vendors not allowed, and no erection of tent, as well as security personnel are not allowed to escort very important persons on election day. Uh, security. The tactical unit, over 24,000 mobile police personnel will be deployed. 4,000 counter-terrorism personnel will be deployed and about 8,000 special protection unit personnel will be deployed. And we are clear on where we are coming from and where we want to go. I want to reassure each and every Nigerian that you will be allowed to exercise your civic responsibilities in an atmosphere devoid of intimidation or inhibition. Resident electoral commissioners were also on ground to address questions that concern their respective states. Mie Ogidi, NT News. And observers in the forthcoming general elections have been tasked to make interpretations that will add value to the electoral integrity in Nigeria. Former INEC chairman Professor Tahiru Jega gave the advice at an election observation sensitization workshop organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, Abuja. John Yaku reports. Few days to the 2019 general elections, local and international observer groups have been accredited to observe the conduct of the election for its integrity. This workshop, organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies needs, is to ensure that the observers play to the rules and regulation of the process. 
Professor Atahiru Jega urged them not to concentrate only on the elections, but also on pre- and post-elections issues for correction to consolidate Nigeria's democracy. It is also about reports from election observation adding value to the integrity of the electoral process. Observer does not interfere with the process of the electoral delegation. 24 observers trained are expected to train 104 others who will be working with the institute to observe the 2019 general elections. Uh, we needed to prepare ourselves, which is normal, to get uh, share experiences with uh, people who are already in the field. It's going to help us equip the observer to be able to do what is expected to do. A comprehensive report by the Institute will be sent to INEC as part of its contributions to deepening democracy and democratic practice in Nigeria. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. Politicians have been implored to be more interested in the development of Nigeria and Nigerians rather than their desperation to occupy elective offices. This was the position of former President Goodluck Jonathan and former head of state General Abdul Salami Abubakar at a peace conference in Abuja, organized by the Goodluck Jonathan Foundation. Timothy Yusuf reports. This on record that despite the marked improvement in the processes of democratic nations, election-related violence have continued to be experienced in many African nations, Nigeria inclusive, often to the detriment of peaceful coexistence, economic growth, and sustainable development. It is in view of this that the Good Luck Jonathan Foundation, in line with its mission of consolidating democracy and peaceful political transitions in Africa, convened the peace conference for key stakeholders to dialogue and consider strategies for sustaining the peace that Nigeria enjoyed in the aftermath of the last presidential elections. For a nation to develop, conflict must be minimized. And we charge our political leaders to be more interested in how we improve the quality of life of our people. Nigeria is the cornerstone of the security of West Africa. Former President Jonathan's words that his ambition does not worth the blood of any Nigerian dominated discussions with a call on the political class to avoid making elections a do or die affair. This gentleman called Good Luck Avele Jonathan kept his word that his presidency is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. And there is a sense in which actually for ordinary poor people Participating in electoral violence is actually an investment. The conference had as its theme peaceful elections and national development in Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. You're watching Network News. We take a break now. More stories ahead. Stay with us. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. His Highness the Shehu of Borono and Deputy President General of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Al Haji Dr. Abubakar Ibn Umar Garbai Al Amin El Kanemi, CFR, warmly invites the Muslim Ummah to the historic commissioning of the Meiduguri Central Mosque, which was completed and modernized by the administration of Governor Kashim Shetima after 33 long years since the mosque was started. His Eminence the Sultan of Sokoto and President General of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Mohammed Saad. Abu Bakr, CFR, MNI, shall by Allah's will commission the Meidugri Central Mosque on Friday the 8th of February 2019. Additionally, four mosques will be commissioned the same day. They include Umar bin Katab Juma Mosque and Islamiyah in Bulunkutu, Kalimari Juma Mosque in Shehuri South, Mafoni Juma Mosque and Abujan Talakawa Juma Mosque. All of them were built by the administration of Governor Kashim Shetima to address spiritual needs dear to the Muslim population in Borno State. Indeed, complete in the Meiduguri Central Mosque after 33 years of waiting will remain a lasting legacy of Governor Kashim Shetima. Welcome to Meiduguri. My people, we are getting better, we are going higher. Today points to the future and the next level. We are better and moving forward. Everything will go to the next level. Everything will decline to the next level. Good jobs will go to the next level. We have done more with less 
in infrastructural developments roads railways major bridges schools energy and power air and sea ports welfare of servants and retired personnel both civilian and military The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has directed all distribution companies in the country to conduct customer enumeration in their respective franchise areas and to complete the exercise by the 31st of March 2019. The Commission hereby urges all consumers to cooperate with the discos in this exercise. This is very important and it is in the interest of consumers as it will improve metering and help discos to respond to electricity issues quickly. Sign Management Nigeria women, eh? Una de die, eh? Market women, eh? Una de die, eh? Time we don't read to where we go pay back. Person we make life better, make we vote down. Who give us electricity? Person them who hurry, airports. Person them who hurry, blow away on cars. Peace and security. In the feed our children. Ajia Salama Tubewa, National Woman Leader, APC. From our wonderful family, meet Patti for celebrating the high points of life with friends. And then there's me, Jolly Jolly, bringing nourishment to every gathering. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. Hollandia. I am fully persuaded that Nigeria needs a man who is credible. I am Chris Okotie. Dependable and trustworthy. I am Chris Okotie. I am Chris Okotie. My mandate, therefore, will be to set up government which have christened government of national reconciliation and reconstruction as a mechanical instrumentality for the crystallization of the new Nigeria of our dreams. It's time to love Nigeria. It's time to fix Nigeria. I'm Reverend Chris Okotia. It's time to fix Nigeria. If you love Nigeria, say, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, wishes to notify the general public that the collection of permanent voters card, PVC, will be suspended at 4 p.m. on Friday, 8 February 2019, until after the 2019 general elections. Eligible voters who registered but have not collected their cards are advised to go to the INEC local government office in the area where they registered to collect their PVC. Remember, no PVC, no voting. This message is from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, making your votes count, consolidating our democracy. Mainstream Delta ABC, MDA in collaboration with Presidential Support Committee, PSC, Good Governors Ambassadors of Nigeria, GOGA, and the Buhari Youth Organization, BYO, invites the general public to its conference and commission of 4,000 conferences for Buhari Osibajo door-to-door campaign program in Delta State. Date, Saturday night, February 2019, time 8 a.m. Uh, uh, Grand Hotels as ever. Let's have four more years for Buhari. Next level for Buhari Osiba John 2019. Sponsors Olorogu Otega Emero, OON, Engineer Chief Dr. Samuel Ajobe, FNSA, Chief Serial Organor, Chief Host and Organizer. Announces. Her Excellency, wife of the President and chairperson of the APC Women and Youth Presidential Campaign Team, Dr. Aisha Buhari, cordially invites the general public to a solidarity walk for Buhari. Meet up point, Unity Fountain, Meitama Abuja, date Saturday 9th, February 2019, time 7 a.m. 
Please come in comfortable outfit as we will be walking from Unity Fountain to Eagle Square in solidarity with President Muhammad Buhari. Announcer, Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamarwa, Chairman, Central Working Committee of APC Women and Youth Presidential Campaign Team. Thanks for staying with the NTA. This is Network News with me, Joseph Johnson. To some cheering news now, uh, Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has suspended its three months industrial action effective from Friday, 8th February 2019. ASU and federal government has trashed out all the eight contending issues that led to the university strike that started on the 4th of November 2018. Following a careful review of the report of engagements with the federal government on proposals for addressing all outstanding issues in the 2013 MOU and 2017 MOA, NEC resolved that the current strike action by the union should be suspended conditionally with effect from 12 one a.m. on Friday, 8 February 2019. Now, the Adamo State Council of Emirs and Chiefs uh, have described the next level movement being championed by President Muhammad Buhari as the most critical pathway towards sustaining the growth and development of Nigeria for greater future. Chairman of the Council and Lamido of Adamawa, Dr. Mohamedou Barkindu Aliu Mustafa, who stated this while formally endorsing the second term bid of President, paid homage on the Council members. State House correspondent Adam Samba reports. No one can deny the fact that Adamawa, the land of beauty, is a synergy of all eyes as the forthcoming general elections draw closer. As the home state of the leading opposition candidate Atiku Abubakar, expectations are that the sweeping power of the broom may have its potency weakened, but this is not the case. The enthusiastic love and affection for President Muhammad Buhari by the people of Adamawa is to say the least beyond politics. And if you must know, this is the birthplace of the president's wife, Aisha Buhari, and the governing APC is where almost everyone that matter in the politics of Adamawa now belongs. <laughs> On hand to receive the president at the Fomina Palace of the Adamawa Emirate, where paramount traditional rulers from across the state, led by Lamido Fomina, Dr. Muhammad Ubarkindo Ali Mustafa. Speaking on their behalf, the Lamino described as fulfilling and reassuring the revolutionary initiatives of the Buhari presidency, which he said can only be sustained for greater impact through continuity. I would therefore like to use this opportunity on behalf of my humble self, members of my council, and the entire people of Adamawa to acknowledge with immeasurable thanks and congratulate you on keeping faith with the contract you entered with our people and indeed Nigerians. Mr. President, there is no doubt that much has been achieved during your present tenure, but certainly you need more time to actualize your dream for a better Nigeria. 
This therefore calls for all and sundry to rally around you and allow you to get to the next level to enable you to consolidate the various laudable programs of your party. Being the Commander in Chief, if necessary, I will read the right act to the law enforcement agencies about making sure that people are respected, they are allowed to go and vote whom they like across the parties. I assure the Lanido that uh, I value that because we are people who benefited from free and fair election. The Buhari passion was also rekindled in Taraba State, the nature's gift to the nation. This is where the governing APC is actualizing the 3,050 megawatts Mambila hydropower project abandoned for decades in spite of its significant benefits to the socio-economic development of the state and the country. Consequently, the major road in Jalingo, the state capital, was therefore overflowed by sea of humanity with a mission to show love, affection, appreciation and indeed commitment to the broom revolution as the president came calling. The presence of Governor Darius Ishaku of the PDP notwithstanding, the Taraba State Council of Traditional Rulers endorsed the re-election bid of President Muhammad Buhari, which they attributed to his credibility, good intentions, sense of pity for the less privileged, selflessness in service, and continued sacrifice for a greater Nigeria. We have given you your trust, and in the four years, we are witnesses that you have kept the trust. This country now is in dear needs of people who are out to make sacrifices as you do. Nigeria must be corrected and must be corrected now and you are the right person to do it. President Muhammad Buhari, who acknowledged the show of public support, reassured the people of Taraba that their fate in the governing APC will never be in vain. The Broom Revolution has so far been reinforced in 29 states of the Nigerian Federation. Adam Musambu, NTA News. Also, the traditional rulers of Buhari Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory have endorsed the candidature of President Muhammad Buhari in the forthcoming general elections under the platform of the All Progressives Congress. State House correspondent Ali Kabir reports. This is coming when the Women and Youth Presidential Campaign Team visited the palaces of the rulers in Buhari Area Council in continuation of their door-to-door -door campaign, conversing support for the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari in the forthcoming election. The first port of call was the palace of the Sarki of Buhari, Awal Musa Ijakoro II. The message of the wife of the president soliciting the traditional ruler and his people to cast their vote in favor of President Muhammad Buhari she used the occasion to call on the leaders to continue to educate the youth in the area not to engage in any form of violence before, during and after February polls. The team was engaged vigorously in voter education. We believe it's going to be 100% for General Muhammad Buhari. These are APC women and they are assuring Baba Buhari that uh, come February 16th, they will come out en masse as we have seen them now. The Sarki of Buari, Awal Musa Ijakoro II, assured them of their full support. The campaign train moved to SU of Buari, Ibrahim Nyaru, where similar messages were presented with optimism of providing more developmental programs geared towards the improvement of the welfare of Nigerians. The SU of Buari, Ibrahim Nyaru, told the delegation that the chiefdom has no any other presidential candidate than President Muhammad Buhari from Buari Area Council, Ali Kabir, NTA News. The Social Democratic Party, SDP, has endorsed the APC presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, as its choice for the February 16th presidential poll. This was at the party's fourth National Executive Committee's meeting in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. 
The Social Democratic Party's decision endorsing the APC presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, was contained in a communique following the resolution reached at its fourth National Executive Council meeting this Thursday in Abuja. The party's deputy national chairman, North, Dr. Abdul Isiak, explained that the SDP has been battling a pending litigation at the Supreme Court one which has narrowed its chances of fielding a presidential candidate on time for the election. Both the SDP and APC, he said, share similar ideals. Therefore, the choice of supporting President Buhari's second term bid. At the National Executive Committee NEC of the Social Democratic Party resolved to adopt the APC presidential candidate as a candidate of the party for the 2019 presidential election. The next meeting further implored SDP members and supporters to henceforth campaign for the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Ahead of the All Progressives Congress APC Mega Rally on Saturday, National Coordinator of Buhari Campaign Organization Danladi Pasali says more than 5 million Lagosians are waiting to receive the president. Paul Mukago reports. Recognizing the importance of Lagos State in the political space, the National Coordinator of Buhari Campaign Organization, Dala Di Pasali, says a grassroots mobilization has been carried out preparatory to the rally. The coordinator expressed confidence that Lagosians will vote massively for President Muhammad Buhari. Empowerment is key to the life of Nigerians, and that is why, because of that achievement, the whole people of Lagos are showing down on Saturday and we came to synthesize our members to also mobilize and came out and massed to welcome Mr. President. National Woman Leader of Buari Campaign Organization, Fola Shade Tinibu Ujo, urged the traders to turn out in mass for the APC Mega Rally. In Lagos, Paul Mukamu, NTA News. Now, the People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar has promised to address the issue of unemployment, poverty and security challenges bedeviling the country if elected as president of Nigeria. The presidential candidate stated this while addressing party loyalists in Damaturu, the Yube state capital, at the PDP presidential campaign rally. Yunusa Suleiman reports. Addressing the crowd, Atiku Abubakar told the electorate that the era of empty promises has ended. According to him, if elected as president, his administration will revive the country's economy, security, as well as restoring the lost glory of the northeast region ravaged by the activities of Boko Haram insurgents. PDP National Chairman Uche Sekundos charged the party loyalists to stand and defend their votes to ensure that every vote counts. A wind of change that is across this nation has arrived in Yobe. Yobe State People's Democratic Party governorship candidate Ambassador Umar Ilya Damagun called on people of the state to come out en masse and vote the party for meaningful development in the state and the country in general. There were goodwill messages from the party's chieftains and leaders extolling the virtues of the presidential candidate and the need to vote all People's Democratic Party candidates in the forthcoming general elections in the country. Enzo Suleiman, NT News. Now, barely a day after the All Progressives Congress presidential campaign rally in Lafia, Governor Umaru Tankua Makura and the party stakeholders say they will be working round the clock to sustain the success of the door-to-door -door interaction with the electorate to secure their votes for President Buhari. Joshua Ojito reports. The southern zone of the state, which has 53 electoral wards, is the takeoff zone of the campaign. Oh, sorry about that uh, hitch in that report. If we can, we will bring it in the course of this bulletin. In the meantime, let's move on. Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Aisha Abubakar, has urged Nigerian women to re-elect President Muhammad Buhari for second term in the interest of social, uh, more social investment programs aimed at empowering them. She was speaking in Sokoto at the sensitization campaign on development programs of the AP. PC. Dalhatu Abdullahi completes the report. 
The sense starvation campaign organized by the Minister Aisha Abubakar brought together women from across the 23 local governments in Sakoto State. It was an opportunity for the women to show their support for President Muhammad Buhari's second term bid. Minister of State, Industry, Trade and Investment Aisha Abubakar, who is also overseeing the Ministry of Women Affairs, called on Nigerian women to reciprocate the introduction of the numerous social investment programs by voting for President Muhammad Buhari. With the minimal resources that we have, see all the infrastructure work that is going, see how the poorest of the poor are being supported, see how Nigerians are changing, both in attitude, we're having savings so that we can do better things. Who else can we choose if not Muhammad Buhari? Wife of Kebi State Governor Dr. Zainab Atikubagudu, represented by Halima Boyediko, urged women to avoid the use of henna on their fingers so that they will not be rejected by card reader. Leadership of Buhari Support Organization in Sakoto and other speakers urged Nigerians to vote massively for all the APC candidates in the forthcoming elections. Fight against corruption, empower, school feeding program, Uncle Borowa were identified as some of the programs introduced by President Buhari, whose positive impact were felt by Nigerians. In Sakoto, Nalat Abdullahi, NTA News. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has ordered the arrest of former Director General of National Intelligence Agency Ayodele Oki anywhere in the world. Viera Chumuba reports that the Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has also sentenced Saeed Arogun Dadi, chairman of the National Union of Rail Transport Workers, Boundary Ayatoru Unit, to death by hanging for killing a police officer. The order to arrest the former Director General of National Intelligence Agency, Ayodele Oke, was necessitated by his failure to appear in court for arrangement on two occasions. Frustrated by non-appearance of Oke to face charges on the $205 million fraud brought against him by the anti-graft agency, the commission approached the court for the order. Even though the EFCC is yet to ascertain the whereabouts of the former NIA Director General, whose wife, Falashade, is also alleged to have purchased flat 7B number 16 Osborne Towers, Osborne Road, with more than $1 million money belonging to the federal government. EFCC had slammed OK with a four-count charge after he was suspended and his office laid claim to the ownership of the funds in different foreign currencies recovered by the EFCC in Lagos, Vieira, Chumuba. NTA News. So staying with the judiciary, the high, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has confirmed Mohamed Sani Musa as the candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the Niger East Senatorial District in the upcoming general elections. Justice Folashade Ogumbanjo granted an order setting aside the nomination and submission of the name of Senator David Umaru to INEC by the APC on grounds that the party lacks the powers to nominate, sponsor or, or forward any candidate's name to INEC after conducting primary election. The court held that since the plaintiff, Mohamed Sani Musa, acquired the highest number of votes in the primary elections conducted by the party in October 2018, it should be the one to represent the party in the upcoming elections. We put in our notice of appeal and application for stuff execution to challenge the judgment of the court because we don't agree with the court. Primary election was conducted, a winner emerged, and some people from somewhere will just said, No, you are not going. Somebody else will go. But the court have done what everyone was expecting. In the meantime, the All Progressives Congress APC has slammed the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, over its failed attempt to demonize the APC, President Muhammad Buhari administration, and deploying intimidation and blackmail tactics against the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and other state institutions ahead of the general election. In a statement by the APC National Secretary, Malam Lanre Isa Onilu, the party says, the PDP's line of attack cannot affect President Buhari's 
emphatic victory in the February 16 election. The APC also expressed shock on PDP's allegation that the distribution of permanent voters' cards, PVC, is being hampered by INEC to disenfranchise supposed PDP supporters. The statement adds that the PDP and its leaders cannot hold the APC responsible for their electoral misfortunes. And now let's uh, go over to Lagos to get more reports with Ruth. Ruth? Thank you, Joseph, and a warm welcome to Lagos. The federal government is continuing its massive expansion of the power sector with the inauguration of a new 13233 kV transmission substation in Ilashe Island, Lagos. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, said the project will deliver over 20 megawatts to communities along this axis. Michael Olale reports. Ilashe community might not have the expected population density, but it is strategic to economic growth. Aside being a major terminal for the distribution of petroleum products, it is the closest island to the ever busy business corridor at Apapa. The inauguration of this 132-33 kVA transmission substation is to drive investment and create another industrial hub similar to a coal Atlantic city. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, said the project is part of the present administration's drive to aggressively fix infrastructure in order to increase global competitiveness, which in turn will lead to massive job creation. What we expect to see here is reduced cost of operation for all of the businesses and the homes, uh, less generators, cheaper fuel, energy distributed now by Eco Disco. The project anchored around the goal of using rural based electricity supply to stimulate industrial growth at cheaper cost was constructed by the engineers of the transmission company of Nigeria using locally sourced material at the cost of 150 million naira. This project, if we have given contract to, it will not be delivered in less than five years. But you have seen this project have been delivered in less than one year. The 132-33 kVA transmission substation, which is the first offshore-based project, would deliver about 24 megawatts of power to Ilashe, Ikare, Iladodo, EBC, and other communities along the stretch of the peninsula. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Anti-cyber crime war in Nigeria requires modern strategies to safeguard the Nigerian financial industry. Managing Director, Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, Umar Ibrahim, stated this at a capacity building for law enforcement agencies. Lynn Leneke reports that the Managing Director was represented at the event. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation's 2017 annual report indicates that forgeries and fraud in banks have risen to 56.30%, while internet online banking and ATM card-related fraud types consisted about 92.68% of the reported cases, which resulted in 1.5 billion naira losses in the banking industry. These figures, according to NDIC, underscores the necessity for collaboration with law enforcement agencies to curtail such crimes which are causing irreversible damage to the economy. The essence of the workshop is actually to update our skills in terms of what are the new actually tools and uh, methods they use. With that, we can be able to detect it early before it actually resulted in loss. Each agency was given an assignment and they were going to review what each of them have done, how far they've gone with the implementation of the recommendations given to each agency. Speakers unanimously agreed that capacity building for law enforcement agencies is a relevant platform to equip participants with needed skills to combat the menace of cyber crime. This workshop, I'm sure, is going to like afford us the opportunity to strategize, come up with you know methodologies methodologies in order to like uh, uh, stem the tide. This training will bring people from all uh, law enforcement. They will rub their minds and deal with the current trends and see how they can be dealt with. We are always prepared to take up new knowledge uh, with proper understanding of uh, what we are facing, especially with regards to cybercrime. 
established in 1988, NDIC provides a safety net for the banking sector. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. In the strength, yeah, that comes from the hard knocks that life throws at us. And we Nigerians, we know all about that. Oh, a deadly run. You don't stay down, you get up and fight. Sure, it's about speed, technique, quality of the punches, reach. But the real fight is with myself. It's the power, but it's the speed as well. But I can't carry this heavyweight title by myself. There's always got to be someone in my corner. And that's why I believe in GLOW. We have that same tenacity, that Nigerian fighting spirit that makes us game changers. You have to dig deep to be a world champion. But yeah, we Nigerians, yeah, we know all about that. What a fight! Glow, a halo. Heavyweight champion of the world. All TVs say picture quality, but never mention the most important color, black. It uncovers the hidden details of nature, brings out the richness in all colors, and reveals life. With self-lighting pixels, only OLED TVs make perfect black. And perfect black creates perfect color. LG OLED TV. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Shower, showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque. Please realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during, and after the elections, what are you saying to those who worship in your church and at your mosque? Yes, every Sunday and every Friday, all of us, Muslims and Christians alike, troop out to our various places of worship to hear God speak through our pastors and imams. As a pastor, as imams, you owe it a duty to God and to this nation towards ensuring peace before, during and after the general elections. Speak to those who worship under you. Encourage them to exercise their civic responsibility peacefully. Let's join hands to ensure peaceful general elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. When people say, what has President Buhari done? You say, think back to how Nigeria was before he came. The country had no savings or reserves because of stealing from politicians and government officials. Remember how bad terrorism and security were? Boko Haram was so powerful, it was basically an alternate government. President Buhari has made every part of this country safe again and he has stopped corruption dead in his tracks. When they say, but has he done anything for the economy? You say, everything he has done has been for the economy by addressing the security situation and tackling corruption. President Buhari has built the foundation for economic growth. Yes, it was hard sometimes, but over the next four years, we will reap the harvest of the seeds that we have sown together. Now that we have a foundation, it's time to build. Create jobs, build infrastructure, industrialize agriculture, and reduce high prices and poverty for all Nigerians. Don't turn back now. It's time to take Nigeria to the next level. 
The presidential media team invites the public to the book presentation titled Nigeria on Firmer Ground Towards Lasting Peace and Progress, a Compendium of Achievements under the Buhari Administration. Date, Friday, February 8, 2019. Venue, State House Conference Center, Abuja. Time, 4 p.m. prompt. Special guest of honor, Muhammad Buhari, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Chairman of Yokation, Ashwaju Ahmed Bolatinubu, National Leader, APC, Book Reviewer, Chief Olusegun Oshoba, Book Presenter, Senator Ken Inamani. For further details, please call the following numbers. Femi Adeshino, 0805-500-1928, Garba Shew, 0803-408-0058, Laolu Akonde, 0805-941-3866. Organizing Committee, Announcer. Well, do stay with us here on NTN Network News. We're back in just a moment. Madam. That's it. Those narrows I know. Hi, dear. Mm. Helen. You've got so much even after spending so little. Savings is such a necessity. You save everywhere. But here, you lose it all. How? With this? Impossible. New Tika Apic 10X. Even after applying up to one liter of your solution multiple times, you won't get the same cleaning that Apic gives you in a single round. And the expense? Far less compared to your one liter of solution. New Tika Apic. Top and cleaning. Top and savings. <laughs> Always the good safe. Now, end power training with the good drill. Sure. Now, which one be that? End power and a program with federal government bring come for all these young graduates and hard working people, them. Who says that so that they go feel they learn different, different skills? Yeah. After the training, federal government will help them so that they go even start their own business. On top of that, federal government will come to give them 30,000 30, naira mm -hmm. every month. Sure. Ma. As yeah. they follow you talk, yeah. federal government don't gather different people, different youth, and different volunteers for the next batch. Yeah. When I finish my own training, me say I go own my own big fish farm, and I go to train others. Yeah, this one a good one though. This our government just try away. Well, well. My picking, they go. <laughs> you see me, eh? Me say I go tell my son, make him say go and run for and power. <laughs> And that's it on the news tonight. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Up next is The Ballot Live with Fisayo Ogunfui.